In this tutorial, I will continue to penalize and optimize some other freeform surfaces within the ET cube. I'll start by hiding what I don't need. And the target for this clip will be this funnel-like shape. The first step is to start to build a coarse mesh. And I will do that by using mesh primitives like 3D face. The idea is to build up a coarse mesh that roughly resembles the shape of your input. Now we can join these quads together. And a very important step is to weld your mesh and we will use ET weld for that. We just click the button. And I will set a very generous tolerance here because I was I was really sloppy at picking those vertices at the bottom there. So this is ready for subdivision right now. Since the subdivision process will try to smoothen the mesh, I will first set some vertices as corners and fixed as well. This is because I want these vertices right here to stay in the corners and not to be smoothened out. So we will just set them as corners first and then we will set them fixed. And now we're ready to subdivide this coarse mesh. I will subdivide with Ketmo Clark And this is the fun spoiler. At this point we can delete the coarse mesh or we can keep it and do some multi-scale mesh modeling if you want to drag the vertices a bit. It's not really necessary in this case because the subdivided mesh is reasonably close to our reference surface but we just did it for fun. Okay, we can delete this now. We can set our reference surface. And before optimizing, we will check the optimization parameters. And we've got the default surface closeness and curve closeness. So let's optimize it and see how the result looks like. And as expected, it's not very pretty without some fairness. So the next thing we will do is ramp up the fairness parameter. Let's just go to 1. Optimize and see how the result looks like. And it is a lot better. An interesting thing to note is that when you're optimizing cylindrical or funnel-like shapes, is that when you have fairness in your optimization importance the seams at the bottom of your cylinder or funnel will start to rotate because the fairness term will try to get these polylines as straight as possible let's just hide our reference surface for a moment and the result looks pretty nice except this rotational movement here. We can check out how close this mesh is to our reference surface and we have a maximum deviation of 16 and this is a value which is in your model units. I'm working in meters so we have a 16 centimeter deviation maximum. We can also analyze the planarity. Uh, you can do this by just choosing planarity here. Let's set the range. 
and the maximum deviation is 14 centimeters and what this value means this is measured as the shortest distance between the diagonals of a quad face this is again in model units so we have 14 centimeters here now we have the functionality for planarization in the trial version and vertex fitting as well for testing but I'll just remind you that if you have bought the base module and you haven't bought the planarization module you will not be able to use the planarization function so let's just start to ramp up the planarity term so we get a much better result let's just go to one first optimize and see how the result looks like and it did improve but not a lot we went from 0.14 to 0.12 so I will just ramp up the parameter a lot more let's just go to 5 optimize and you can see the drastic changes and we went from 0.12 to 0 0.025 so this is 2.5 centimeters between the diagonals of the most unplanar face and this is not a bad result especially since these panels here are 2.8 meters by 2.4 meters but we can get an even better result now before optimizing for planarity further I can show you how to optimize the position of some vertices as you can see globally they are pretty smooth but let's say that if we wanted to have all these vertices right here in a single plane we can do that and we can optimize for that so I will just select my surface and turn the grips on I will select this bunch of vertices and I will set them to be in a plane the default uh, option is a general plane but we can set that to be a parallel plane to X or Y. Let's do that. Before optimizing, we have to ramp up the coplanarity term. Let's go to 2. Let's optimize. And as you can see, those set of vertices are now in a plane, and the result looks much nicer. We can do the same thing for this set of vertices at the bottom. Let's say you wanted to have that aligned to a floor slab. So let's turn the grips on, select a bunch of vertices, and put them in a parallel plane to X or Y. Okay. We can now optimize again. And those set of vertices are now nicely aligned in a plane parallel to X or Y. We can try to optimize further for planarity. We can just ramp up the planarity to, let's say, 8. Check the range again, and we have 1.4 centimeters. And this is a really good result. We have a bit of a kink here, and we can optimize that as well. We select that bunch of vertices, and we set them to become planar as well. Now let's optimize again. And the result looks much nicer. An interesting thing to note is that when you look at the optimization parameters, 
all these parameters here are fighting each other in order to achieve a result. So you just have to ramp up or down the parameter that you are most interested in. For example, either the planarity or the coplanarity or the surface closeness or the curve closeness or maybe the fairness. So just play around with these parameters and see how they affect the final optimization result. Now, this is it for the funnel. Um, you can replicate the results with the trial version. So just do that yourself and have fun.